Ray diagrams for lenses. Ray diagrams are drawn to determine the location of the lens, but also to derive the image characteristics. There are two major simplifications to draw on these ray diagrams. There are an infinite number of rays coming from an object, but we will only focus at most to only three rays. A picture of this is as, even though an object like this six figure has an infinite number of rays coming from every single spot on this person, we're going to focus at the top of the head and say that there are only three rays that we care about, ray one, two, and three. But this person is difficult to draw, so what we'll typically draw is an arrow instead to represent the object. So once again, from now on, all objects will be drawn as arrows. The second thing, it is customary to draw lenses with curved surfaces. For converging, thicker in the middle. For diverging, thinner in the middle. Where the focal length of converging lens is positive, and the focal length of a diverging lens is negative. I will not draw curved converging and diverging lens, but instead replace these lenses with a thicker straight line that represents the lens. In other words, the way I'm going to identify converging lens is that I'll write explicitly that the focal length is greater than zero, and the same thing for a diverging lens that the focal length is less than zero. By drawing them as straight lines, it will simplify ray diagram tracing considerably. Now let's go look at what these three rays, one, two, and three are. Ray one, a ray parallel to the central axis, refracts through the thin lens and goes through the focal point. Ray two, a ray that refracts through the middle of the lens, but because it's a thin lens, the ray appears to have no bending. Ray 3, a ray that goes through the focal point first and then refracts at the lens parallel to the central axis. So now I'm going to draw ray diagrams with these three rays depending on the object location that will then produce an image. There are five possible locations that an object can be. Let's draw these out. Remember, S is the variable that represents the object location. I could be outside of 2F. I could be at 2F. I could be in between 2F and F. I can be at F. And finally, I could be inside of the focal point. I will now go through each of these five cases. Case 1 when S is outside of 2F. My object here is shown in orange, and you could see that I've labeled the distance S from the lens to where the location is, where the object location is. Now let's draw ray number one. Ray number one is in red. It goes from the tip of the arrow, it goes parallel to the central axis, and then it refracts through the focal point. Ray number two is in blue. It starts at the tip, goes through the focal point, and right away you could see that the blue and the red cross here. Remember what I said. Rays that cross form an image. Ray number three in green goes through the focal point and then parallel to the central axis. Where all three of these rays converge or cross, that forms the image. So the image of the object, which is an arrow, is now an upside-down pink arrow. And so now its location is S prime from the focal length. So immediately I could make certain uh, image characteristic references. We see that the image is inverted. It's smaller than the object. And it's real. Why is it real? Because it's on the opposite side of the object. Now let's go move the object to F, 2F. Placing the object at 2F, you could see that ray 1 again goes parallel to the central axis, refracts through the focal point. Ray 2 in blue goes from the tip of the arrow 
through the focal point and then crosses up here. Drawn out ray number three goes through the focal point, refracts, and then go crosses with the other three rays. So now I can draw the image, its image location. So the image is in pink and we could see that it's inverted. It's the same size as the object because you could see it's one square in height and it's real because it's on the other side of the lens. The distance from the lens to the location of the image is S prime. The distance from the lens to where the object located is S. So now these next two, I'm going to draw a little bit quicker. When the orange object is between 2F and F, you can see that I have my three rays, 1, 2, and 3. And as they're drawn, I get an image on the other side. So I could see that the image in pink here is inverted. It's larger than the object because why? It's larger than one square in height. And it's real because it's on the other side of the image. So now what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to go look at the object that's inside the focal point. Now here's when things change. For ray number one, it again goes parallel to the central axis, refracts, but then we follow it backwards in this dashed line. Ray number two goes through the focal point, and then it reflects back through here. So I could draw ray number three, but it becomes problematic for the situation. So I'm going to stick to only two rays, and where they cross is where the image is formed. The image here is in pink, and if I look at its characteristics, this time it's erect. It's larger than the object, and it's virtual because it's on the same side as the object. The location of the object is S. The location of, of the image is S prime. Now we deal with the last ray diagram where S is equal to F. When the object is located at the focal point here, when I draw ray 1 and ray number 2, what you find here is that these two rays are parallel and they never cross. It is said that these rays cross at infinity. Of course, this does not make sense. However, the railroad, railroad analogy states differently. Looking at the image of these railroads, we know that they're parallel to each other. However, in the distance, they seem to converge. So when the object is at the focal point, we say that the image is formed at infinity. Now I'm going to draw a complicated ray diagram for the converging lens that summarizes all of these rays. So I have a single ray diagram. The oranges here, ray, arrows, are the locations of the object. So it's going to be outside of 2F, 2F, in between 2F and F, and inside F. So when you look at ray number one, it never changes for any of these four objects. Once again, ray number one does not change for all four objects. What does change is ray number two. For the object outside of 2F, you could see that in the blue ray, it produces an image between F and 2F. Now let's go to the object at 2F. When the object is located at 2F, the green ray now produces an image at 2F. When the object is between 2F and F, the ray of uh, 2, which is now in violet, now produces an image that's outside of 2F. When the object is inside the focal point here, then I have to follow the rays backwards. So I see then that the image is now in pink here, which is, of course, larger, erect, and virtual. So in summary here, we say the following things. All real images are inverted and their sizes can be either smaller, same, or larger. All virtual images are erect 
and their sizes are always larger. This is an important diagram to be able to recreate on your own. Let's look at some real images. I know that real images are inverted. So if I look at the right, what I have here is that I have a spherical bubble of water. And what you find here is that that acts like a lens because of its curved surface. The fact that the image is inverted means that this object had to be uh, outside of 2F because it's smaller than the actual person. On the left here, these are virtual images. Why? Because they're erect. So the question is, how do I know if I have a converging lens? If I look at the sheet music here, you could see that this is the original size of the uh, music notes. But if I put a lens in front of this thing, you could see that this lens does not change the orientation of the music lettering. However, the image is larger for these notes. On the other hand, on the right side, you see that the image here is actually smaller. So therefore, this image here cannot be for a converging lens, but the one on the left is for the converging lens. The same thing happens with this ruler. When you look at this ruler, you could see that the object, which is the letters or the numbers on the ruler, and through the lens, they're smaller, so this cannot be a converging lens. But if I look at over here to the right with the guy with the magnifying glass, you could see that his eye is clearly larger than his other eye. So therefore, this must be for a converging lens, and the object must be inside the focal length. In summary, the image of the man in the bubble here is inverted and smaller, so therefore the object must be outside of 2F. The images of the music note in this corner and of the guy with the magnifying glass, since it's larger and erect, that means that the object must be inside of the focal length. These two images are not converging lenses.